And now here on Kiwi. Well, it was a few weeks ago, in fact, I think it was a few months ago, that um, Diane Tuft, photographer from New York, was on the show to tell us about um, her work um, in pho- photography, I think, in Greenland and up in the Arctic, around that region. And yes. she's now here in New Zealand. She said that she was thinking about coming down here, and here she is. Hello, Diane. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Glenn. Just to um, refresh, what type of photography do you do? Well, I'm quite interested in uh, photographing landscape that you can't see. And so I take advantage of uh, light that you can't see, which are the infrared and ultraviolet light waves that human beings can't see. We can only see visible light, and the visible light is between 400 and 700 nanometers, and below 400 is your UV light, and above 700 is your IR light. And so I'm interested to see what happens uh, when you photograph it, since I'm not altering any of my images, what actually exists that human beings can't see. So what landscapes actually look like under that light, that particular spectrum of light. Exactly. Yeah. We've got plenty of UV light in this part of the world, don't we? Yes, (laughs) we do. As a matter of fact, um, one of the reasons I came to New Zealand was because of the fact that you do have... um, Sort of a mini ozone hole here. Um, your ozone goes between 220 to 290 here in the summer. And what does that mean? That's quite low. Uh, the Dobson units, it's the thickness of the ozone layer, which is measured in terms of Dobson units. And um, the thicker it is, the higher the number, and the uh, thinner it is, the lower the number. Okay. So 200 is considered very, very low which means that the ozone layer is quite thin. And uh, in your summer, you get down to 220. Yeah, so right about now, really. Yeah, actually, um, I've been watching the ozone um, Dobson unit and the um, UV index, and it's actually getting better every day. Your ozone is, I guess you're getting towards February. It's meant to be improving, right? Yes, but I'm just saying it's the time of year. Okay. So um, about... Three weeks ago, it was much worse, huh. and every day it seems to get a little bit better. Yeah. So I actually went down to visit Richard McKenzie from the Lauder um, Station. Uh, he's a that's Niwa, the Niwa He's place. a Niwa yeah. scientist yeah. who does uh, research on ozone depletion, UV light, to kind of understand the light of New Zealand, which is so unusual. And he told me that New Zealand has ten times the uh, cleaner air than anywhere in the northern hemisphere Mm. and uh, because the air is so clean they're able to measure ozone without having scattered light and uv it's a much clearer air now that's in the otago region isn't it where that testing station is yes it's very desolate and there's nothing around there so it's quite clear yeah and a pretty amazing uh, landscape normally to photograph anyway right exactly it's it was nice, but unfortunately, we didn't have that much time to photograph it. I photographed the station and his instruments, and I uh, recorded him talking about everything, so I yeah. can remember something about it. <laughs> I, I, are you putting to the, to this together as a, a show, a documentary piece? What is it? Um, well, I'm a photographer, and so I'm very interested in just images. So my images are quite striking, and people say, well, What does this mean? Why are they like this? What have you done? You know, many people look at my work and they said, okay, we know this photographer. He does the same kind of work. And then you go to his website and they're all man, you know, they're all man made. I mean, they, they're not actually, uh, they're not actually of the environment. So it sort of begins a discourse on, uh, global warming and, uh, environment and how we really need to protect it. And one of the things that was even more shocking, I mean, I came here for the UV light but I noticed when I was in Iceland that the glaciers were melting because I had been there twice in yeah. the same glacier. Yeah. But this time it was even more shocking because um, I was here at the Franz Josef uh, Glacier 12 years ago and, in fact, have my family photo there in this 20-foot ice cave. Right there at the front of it. And we mm. were walking through them and wow. around them, and, and it was fantastic. And I went back two days ago. Yeah. Things have changed? Yes. Um, I would say the tallest ice cave, which wasn't really an ice cave, it was only a cave because there was a hole through it, mm. was maybe five to six feet. I mean, you certainly couldn't walk through it. Mm. 
So that's pretty shocking in 12 years. It's retreating, isn't it? And, and they're also having a drought there as well. There's been issues yeah. with water supply this And in summer. fact, our guide had said that it's so bad that, you know, they have, I mean, we flew on to the, the glacier, but many people walk up, they hike up, they bring them to the bottom, and then they just hike. Yeah. That in two years, they will not be able to allow anyone to hike up. So it's too dangerous. Even too it's dangerous. falling apart and crumbling. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be melted too much. So did you do a bit of photography there, UV yes. photography? Yes, yes. It was quite... I'm just looking at the photos now because yeah. it was just two days ago. Yeah. And uh, I have some amazing photographs because the UV light, what it does is it sharpens the shadows quite a bit. Yeah. And it um, brings out sort of pinks and purples. So when you look with your naked eye... You look at something and it's blue and white, but if I, I use a special um, a lens that I just actually purchased, oh, let's see, just a few weeks ago okay. that is made of quartz, Right. and quartz allows UV to come through, Yeah. and the colors are just amazing, and it's an iceberg that if you looked with your own eye, you would just see white. What no, kinds of colors? Are they reddish, sort of pinkish colors? What? Yeah, purples, pinks, a little yellow. Um, it's mostly on that end mm. of the spectrum. And you still see the blue and you still see the green, but it brings out these amazing pinks. Wow. It's fantastic. So, friends, Joseph, and, and you do um, some aerial photography? Yes, right? and then I spent uh, the day before uh, flying around the Queensland area uh, photographing Queenstown. Very, Queenstown, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Queensland <laughs> is in Australia. <laughs> okay, Qu the Queenstown area, uh, photographing it from the air. Great. And uh, the varied landscape that they yeah. have there. So we went from those beautiful blues and greens of the water when I flew above it yeah. to the glaciers that are not reachable, like are not Franz Joseph, um, and took beautiful pictures of their formations on the top of the mountains. And what was also interesting is we went by a rock that actually had a, uh, had a marker that said February 1985, and that's where the glacier was, yeah. February 1985, and now it's 300 meters lower. Yeah. That's so astounding, isn't it? it's uh, very sad, yeah. So... So what? So from from um, f photographing the, the spectrum of light, you know, how how does it tell the human story? You know, how can mm. what can we take what from we from it? You know, it's interesting. I mean, I don't know. You know, the Earth is the way it is, and it, the atmosphere has changed uh, throughout millions of years. But I think you know, I think we we're trying to prevent aerosols from being released in the atmosphere, which does cause global warming. Um, unfortunately, not every country has abided by that. Mm. Um, you know, it's very expensive to stop burning fossil fuels. Um, so we still have to deal with countries that are not doing that. And because it's the earth and everyone is surrounded by the same air, those aerosols stay in the, um, in the environment for many, 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 many decades. Yeah. So, um, we just hope that... It would be really great if this world would go to alternative energies and, and, and not be dependent on fossil fuels. Including New Zealand as well. But what, what, what about the, um, the health implications from UV light for, say, yes. the population of, of New Zealand? Is that, I mean, exactly. now, now that, now that um, you've taken these photos and we can actually see the light, yes, are, yes. You know, is there, are there messages there? Well, I think it, it's very strong messages, and I know that uh, you that New Zealand has the highest melanoma rate in the world mm. and that you really do have to be extremely careful with the sun. But, you know, the Kiwis, these, you know, are very manly and, you know, <laughs> they won't put suntan lotion on no matter what. Um, and hopefully um, the word will get out that they really do need to. And, in fact, it's very interesting. Um, both myself and, and my assistant went on the glacier and knowing the fact that it had a lot of UV light, if I didn't know that there was a lot of UV light here, I probably wouldn't have bothered yeah. taking suntan lotion. I was only going to be there for two hours. Mm. I wasn't at the beach, so I wouldn't have done it, but I knew it, so I used 50. And so did my assistant. But it's so interesting that she got burnt anyway. Huh. So this morning, actually, I had an email from Richard McKenzie saying, I've been thinking about your assistant's sunburn, and here's the link 
to the fact that lots of suntan lotion doesn't really have the amount of sun protection that it says it does. That's crazy. Which is really interesting. And yeah. she was burnt. Yeah. And she did put 50 on. But I'm using a different suntan lotion. I, I've noticed um, that suntan lotion, you know, it's sort of like yogurt, you know, what percentage is, you know. It's the same thing with suntan lotion, you know, how thick it is. Yeah. Because um, it could be aerated, you know, it's cheaper to make it if it's thinner, even if it's 50, but it could be 50 if you have to use the whole bottle. So we need stronger uh, controls and laws Strongest, around this. I, I would say so, yes. Yeah. Because there was a story um, in uh, one of the papers this week, I think, of a, um, of a, of a child who was wearing suntan, uh, sunscreen, we still call it suntan lotion, <laughs> sunscreen on his shoulders, but he got second degree burns just really? over the weekend. Yeah. So maybe this was the same uh, yeah. website that he was just talking about. Yeah. So um, it is very strong, and it's very important that uh, people are aware of it. I know that this organization called SunSmart is trying to uh, make sure that people understand that they have to wear it. Um, it. People just say, oh, I got a sunburn, and it's fine. But in the end, you know, a few years later, you might end up getting melanoma. Yeah. So it's something that really should be taken to heart. And, yeah. you know, if we have to live in this environment, we have to be protected. Well, eventually your photos will be up at um, your website, dianetuff.com, um, I'd imagine, once you get back and pour over them, I suppose. And yes. Yeah. And then, and, and are you doing anything in particular with them beyond? Well, I have that? a gallery in New York, and I'm going to be... Um, actually, I have a show of my work that I did in Iceland coming up in March. Great. At Marlborough Gallery in New York City, yeah, and um, these photos I will hope will be in another gallery. Um, I've actually talked to some of the galleries here in New Zealand, and it would be lovely to bring them to New Zealand. Absolutely. So that's what I would like to do next year yeah. is to bring the photographs to New Zealand. Well, great to have you um, popping down to um, do such uh, unusual and, and amazing photographs in New Zealand, and it's been Thank a pleasure you, having you drop by as well. Thanks Thank very you, much. Glenn. That's Diane Tuft.